Okay, we go. So back to back. Oh. Dig in, even when she's not playing her best, and she is showcasing it here. Save having the moment get to her. Chair umpire <laughs> getting on Putin Save to come start here. She took a little walk over to her coach. <laughs> yeah, Julie Jinli in the, the chair. Julia, let's go. <laughs> trying to keep control over this match. Okay. And golf breaks to love for a 3 1 lead putting a bit of space between her and her opponent. Like oh, please, it's three games gone more into lockdown mode right now. Getting consistent and seeing what Putin Seva can come up with. And there's been some errors. And Goff now can maybe relax a little bit, Chad, to let the tennis just start to flow a little easier with this lead now. When especially... Yeah, that was a little, little bit better from golf there, but that's... And this is a calmer C3. And she has worked so incredibly hard for these kind of moments. And another ball that sails just past the baseline on golf and Putin say oh. history tells us it is very hard if not impossible to defend a grand slam title with not a lot of confidence this is golf's last time to really pick up her confidence and huge opportunity here. Another couple of break points to try and get up a break in this third Yulia set. Yulia putin Saver versus Coco Goff. We wanted to tune into this one because, number one, we're in America right now and we love Coco Goff. Number two, we love Yulia putin Save as well. But she has a fiery attitude every single match. It's not every other match. It's not, you know, once a month. It's every single match putin Save acts like this. It's very Jack John McEnroe-like. Are you serious? So um, this was uh, Goff and Putin Seva's second match uh, for the Cincinnati Open, and Putin Seva, rather surprisingly, uh, came out with this one. Now I will say Yulia is having a terrific season. It's probably one of her best seasons of her career. She has jumped into something like thirty or thirty-five uh, ranked right now, uh, jumped thirty or forty spots um, in the last uh, few months in the rankings. So disappointment for Coco Goff. She was getting a lot of coaching during this match from her team. Whereas Yulia putin as the coaching was a little more, a little bit more quiet because uh, putin Seva can't really control herself. But um, a lot of fun to watch these two play over there in the newly renovated uh, Cincinnati Open Stadium. They're doing a such such a fantastic, fantastic job. And uh, we will not see a rematch this year between Coco Goff and Iga Sviantek. Uh Coco Goff, of course, beat Sviantek last year in the Cincinnati Open. And then she went to, went on to win the Cincinnati Open, and then she went on to win the U.S. Open and beat Sabalenka in the final. So we'll see what happens as Goff, uh Cincinnati Open is over, and then she's going to, her next tournament, of course, will be the U.S. Open. Here in about, what is it, eight or nine days. It's just a short turnaround before this uh, wonderful U.S. Open event starts, and everyone watches that for sure. Uh, Putin Saban moves on. I'm not sure who she's playing next. I'm not even sure who Iga Sviantek tomorrow is playing. So let me know in the comments who does Sviantek play tomorrow in the Cincinnati Open. Sviantek, I'm not going to say that she almost lost yesterday, but it was certainly a longer match than usual. Longer match than we were expecting, I should say. Uh, so that one was interesting as well. Um, I love this. I love uh, I love Iga Sviantek back on court. I love Coco Gauff back on court. I love Yulia Putin Saban back on court, even though she is absolutely insane. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, I will I will say about Putin Seva, crazy on court. As far as everyone uh, says and and can tell during her interviews, 
super nice off court. So she just turns into a beast, kind of like a football player. You kind of like an NFL player. You get on um, the field and, and you turn into this uh, crazy person because you have to be to tackle people. And then off the court, uh, you're a, a, a superstar, a, a, a sweetheart. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I can't wait to see who Putin Saban plays next. Um, it was it when I first saw that Putin Saban was playing golf in the in the second match of the Cincinnati Open. I thought that was really interesting. I was really excited about this one, and I was not expecting Coco Goff to lose, but she did. So uh, Coco Goff, it's yeah, women's tennis. It's just we don't have right now. I've said this before. I'll say it again. We don't have a lot of rivalries right now in women's tennis uh, on the pro tour, and we don't have uh, that those dominant dominant players. I mean, I know we got Sviantek. I know we've got Sabalenka. Um, I know we got Robakina, but but they're not, you know, we're not seeing those, um, you know, we're seeing different Grand, grand Slam winners every single year. I mean, we, we get Bianca Andreescu wins the U.S. Open. Uh, Marana Kata wins the U.S. Open. Uh, Sviantek wins the U.S. Open. Uh, Quinwen Zhang, who I always mispronounce her name, uh, the beautiful tennis player from China. Uh, she was an Australian Open finalist. She lost to Sabalenka. Um, Wimbledon was, this year was, you know, uh, Krechkova winning that one. Uh, so we're, we're not getting, you know, uh, when the Steffi Graf and the Monica Seleses and the Chris Everts and the Martin, Martina Navratilovas and the Serena Williamses, those were dominant players. We're just, we don't have one of those right now, in my opinion. And I think most people would agree in women's tennis right now. We just don't have it. Um, so it's interesting. It's interesting to see. I think the schedule is just crazy right now for the players as everyone knows. And um, the social media aspect of the world has just changed the world, you know. Um, so uh, the game has just changed uh, so much. So we, we do wonder, after Serena Williams, are we going to see another dominant woman's tennis player who's probably four or five years old right now just picking up a racket 20 years from now? Are we going to see someone um, as special as a Steffi Graf or a, a Serena Williams? So we'll see. Uh, right now, I don't think we have it. But we love our beloved Iga Sviantek. I saw our last uh, video that we posted um, last night about Iga Sviantek and uh, the umpire giving a little warning um, last night. Um, a lot of people are watching from Poland. So thank you so much. If you're watching in Warsaw or anywhere in Poland, thank you so much. Um, it's probably like midnight right now in Poland. Right now it's uh, evening here in the Dallas Metroplex. We're filming today in South Lake, which is a suburb of Dallas here in Texas, here in the United States. So we're so excited that the Cincinnati Open is here in America. Uh, happening this week, and we're so excited, of course, for the U.S. Open next week. So super, super fun. Is that all the tournaments this year, this uh, month in in, uh, in the U.S.? Um, I, we've had a few tournaments in Austin. Um, uh, and then I guess we just got the Cincinnati Open and the U.S. Open. But what a big deal the U.S. Open is! Is going to be in New York. If Iga Shvianta wins the U.S. Open, I will do one thousand jumping jacks, and that's my promise to you. Keep it here. Best muscle video on YouTube. That's the channel, channel you're watching right now. Thank you so much for watching. I know you have a lot of options on where you can watch your tennis analysis. So if you're watching right here, right now, thank you so much. Keep it here. Come back tomorrow. Cincinnati Open. Iga Sviantek playing tomorrow. I don't know who she plays, so let me know in the comments. I'm going to check out who she plays too, but let me know in the comments again if I forget. <laughs> and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Yulia Putinseva acting crazy as usual.